Hello horror hounds, welcome to my horror house. Ghost stories for Christmas are a venerable tradition and this year I would love to read you my own seasonal chiller. It is from my horror short story collection, 17 Stories of Death and Desire. It is by far and away the shortest story in the collection. Think of it as a little icicle dropped down the back of your Christmas jumper to give you a shiver. So make yourself comfortable, gather yourself around the metaphorical fireside and I would love to read for you now The Shades of Midwinter. Granny and I sat by the fire while Ma hovered at the window with her hot chocolate, surveying the darkness outside. This was our first Christmas since Ollie died and Dad left. We'd driven through the night far up into the highlands to reach Granny before the snow arrived, which cut off her village each year. Every room in our house felt empty now, and the journey north felt more like we were running away than travelling to be with family. Granny lanced more marshmallows and passed them to me to hold over the flames, but my mother's strange vigil kept snagging my attention. I don't see anything yet, Ma muttered without turning. I could see her one reflection in the dark glass. She looked worried. I wanted her to be okay, but nothing would ever be okay again. What's she looking for, I whispered. Granny tutted and shook her head. The lenses of her thick glasses were full of flames. That morning we'd woken to a muffling blanket of white which seemed to deaden the air of the small valley. We'd gone outside and joined the rest of the villagers who were making snowmen, one for each of the 23 men, women and children who lived there. Even Granny. We had to wheel her out, but she insisted on patting out a crooked, cold body and head as best she could with her bent, arthritic hands. Don't forget your token, she said, as she puffed and strained, waving away any offer of help. Ma had explained the tradition on the way up, something she'd done each midwinter as a little girl. You roll something personal into the body of your snowman near the heart. Everyone in the village did it. Now Ma kept watch over our effigies while Granny and I sat in the crackling orange circle of heat. Granny put a crooked finger to her lips and let me have a sip of her mulled wine while Ma was distracted. I pulled a face but took another sip when the mug was offered again. Ma inhaled sharply and I snapped my head around. I was up and at her side before Granny could stop me. There were three shadowy figures on the lawn by our snowmen. Who are they? I asked, but no one answered. The fire popped. As I cupped my face to the window, I saw that there were more silhouettes standing outside, other houses too. Each one was standing beside a snowman. Ma, what's going on? I thought I'd imagined it, she murmured, all those years ago. Don't worry, Petal, Granny said. The shades don't bother us if we leave our tokens in our stead. You did leave a token, didn't you? Ma asked. Her expression frightened me. I, I, I thought, I stammered, I, I thought Ollie should be here with us. I put his toy truck in my snowman. I didn't understand what was happening. There was a light, dull knock at the door. Don't answer it, Granny shouted. A hollow, plaintive cry came from the other side. Ollie, my mother called and rushed to the door. Don't! Ma opened the door, but her wide smile froze to something rictus as the cold charged in and filled the room. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas in any way you choose to have it. Be well, be happy, and cheers to you all. If you like what you heard there, there are 16 other tales of the horrible and horrifying and fantastical in 17 Stories of Death and Desire, which is available in paperback, ebook, and Kindle Unlimited from Amazon. What a shill. <laughs> I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home.